I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we're gonna do an Inkscape tutorial, specifically on how to make a repeating pattern, a geometric wavy lines pattern like this. We're gonna use a special tool that Inkscape has called Interpolate, and here's an example of a vertical version, but we're gonna do this pink one today. So it's kind of like pretty cool for like a, a math book cover or something like that. But, but how do, what does repeating pattern even mean? Here's a different pattern. And if you see, this is it actually on a product and it actually matches up seamlessly. So we're gonna create a pattern on a square that you can then take outside of Inkscape and put it on stuff. So this is the pattern and it fits in, that's about where it is. So let's start by making our square. So let's go ahead and grab up here in the Create Rectangles and Squares tool. We'll make some open space. Now, if you hold Shift and Control together, it will create an even square, but that doesn't matter too much because we're gonna actually type in some specifics. So up here, you can see, if you still have your selector tool on the object, you can see the height and width. So for width, actually let's first change it to pixels. And then for width, we'll do 1000, enter. And then for height, do 1000, enter. And then I think I have this transparency, make sure your transparency is, is uh, not on. So we have a full 100% down here. If you don't have this fill and stroke menu, it's this paintbrush thing on the corner. And then for this exercise, it's very important, you don't have a stroke. So the fill can be any color. Let's just go with neutral for now, so you can see what we're doing. Um, but then for stroke, go to stroke and turn it off. And then see how that messed up our dimensions again. So if you had stroke on, make the stroke off and then go back and, re and correct your dimensions. So I'll go to 1000, enter, and then 1000, enter. All right, so that creates the, the base of our pattern. And then there's another important step. We're gonna make sure we can create it so it's seamless. So go onto edit, and then down here on preferences, the dialog box should open up here. And then if, it's, if nothing's open, go to behavior, and then steps, and then see here steps here. We want arrow keys move by, and then since we made our square 1000, the arrow keys move by should be 1000. So then enter, and then just X out of that. So all that did is, you'll see what happens, why we did that. And now we can actually make our, our wave. So grab the Bezier pen tool, this thing right here, then we'll go to some open space. And since we had the stroke off and the fill, if I make my, line it's going to be just like the last thing we did so for stroke let's add a stroke back into it 1.5 and then for the fill i'll turn the fill off so now i don't want that but at least i just reset the bezier pen tool otherwise you'll be like what's going on with this so let's draw a nice flowing curve maybe two humps on it now i have a beginner's tutorial on how to use the bezier pen if you want to check that out but it doesn't even really matter in this case. So let's say that that's actually fine for this project. But let's say you didn't like the way this is looking. You can go to edit paths by node and let's say you want to draw this one out further or if you didn't like the actual angles, that's, that's what these little um, handles do, it changes them. But this is fine, so we'll start with that. Now the actual definition of interpolate is to estimate the value between two, I guess in this case, paths. So we need, we need a second path. So the easiest way to do it, at least the way I like to do it in this case is, you click on it and then go Control D, which duplicates it. And then for simplicity, we'll just flip it upside down. And then we could just go forward with this, but I wanna make, I do wanna make some modifications. On this bottom one, I'll go to my Edit Paths by Node. I'm gonna extend out a tail, because I think it looks cool when the feature, ha when the function happens. And then I'll connect this one down there. And then just, I'll make this part, these two go together. So again, not very precise. I just know what happens when we do this function and I think the tail looks cool. So I'll show you what I mean. All right, so click off every, everything. We're gonna do the, the actual function now. So choose one, shift, choose the other, and then go to extensions, generate from path, interpolate. And here's your menu. So exponent, well, I'll start with zero to show you what that does. So this is exp exponent zero. And then steps is the amount of lines it's going to put in between your two paths so 25 is a lot it gets kind of bunched up but we maybe that looks good and then in, interpolation method two i've tried them all i can't tell the difference so just leave it at two and then don't click on um, any of these other options so i'm going to go to live preview oh <laughs> all right interpolate that's pretty cool all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'll do apply 
and then close. So we'll draw this one out because if this is the what you like, keep it that way. Um, I'm going to do it again though because I'll show you exponent one and three just because I thought this was an interesting feature on it. So let's make sure both are kind of collected. So one, two, they're both selected. Let me zoom out and let's try it again. So we'll go to extensions, generate from path, interpolate. And the only difference I'm changing to exponent 1.0. And then we'll try to see if live preview works. There we go. You see, see how it has um, a little bit more, um, less. there's more space in between the, the lines up here and then less down there. And it creates a harder line on the bottom. It's very subtle difference, but I find it works better if we're going to drop this on top of a black background. So I'm going to go with that. So I'll go apply and get out of there. And then let's, let's actually save this one. We're going to use this one. After the exercise, I'll put it next to exponent one, so you can see. And then for kicks, you can fast forward if you don't want, if you don't care about exponent three, but maybe you will for a different project. So try it again. So extensions generate from path, interpolate, and then we'll do three. I did three because you can see more of the pronounced change. Eh, I'm not feeling this one, but we'll just we'll just go with it so you can see because maybe that would be more use, useful later. So just just to end this little exercise. There's exponent zero, one, and three. You can tell the difference. But let's go forward with this one. I like that one. Now we can set up our pattern itself. So the first choice is what color do you want the wave to be? So this whole thing is a stroke. So we'll go to stroke paint. And then I think we're going to go with this pink today. <laughs> That's good. And I'm going to add a gradient. So if you have your base color selected, then up here choose linear gradient. And that looks cool, but it's backwards. If, it's, if you want to go the other direction, this a pencil thing here so it's going to edit the gradient click on that and you'll get a square and a circle point so the square is where the color is and the circle is where the transparency goes so i want to make my tail kind of trail off and then be full color on this side and that is that's good so all right so let's put this on our where's our square our initial square our pattern grid let's go find that here it is, and I'm gonna actually increase the weight of the stroke. So I'm on stroke style. I do, I'm on millimeters here, 1.5, just to give it a little bit more heaviness there. And then an important step is go to path, stroke to path. And so what that does is now when I minimize it, it doesn't affect the weighting and everything. It kind of locks it in. So we can kind of, we can now um, <laughs> line it up and make our pattern repeat here. So the reason the box is a thousand by a thousand pixels and the step value is a thousand is so that when we duplicate it, Control D, then when I hit the arrow key right once, it'll automatically make it so when this box repeats on the pattern, it'll be seamless. So I've got the two of them here together, and I'll do Shift and I'll collect them both and group them, Control G. Now I can I can duplicate that. And now I can make my pattern. And the reason I can use this as a unit is we know that the uh, step value is a thousand. So I'll move this over here. That looks good. I'll then duplicate that. And then maybe I'll re reverse the whole thing. And then I'll line up the uh, this little swoosh thing with the swoosh. Duplicate that, come down here. You could, it's all personal pre preference at this time. If you have like an idea of if you want more of these beads or if you have if you like more of the wave, you can just kind of like eyeball it. And then the one thing I want to show you at the end is if you get to the bottom, you do have to repeat it vertically as well. So I'll go here, I'll do Control D, and then go up one. So the it's still a thousand step value even if you go vertical. So this this whole <laughs> it's kind of a mess, but it's it's gonna work. So then group all of the different waves, and then control G, that's all one, and then click off of it because we have to get the square. Control D duplicate that, and then now this square will stamp out the pattern and then we'll be done. So so hold shift, get the the wave, then go to object, clip set <laughs> and there okay this, let's get rid of this this uh what happened here let's get rid of the um that yellow thing and this is this is it this is the base of your pattern so if you have it selected control d it still has the step value so push the right arrow once so you see how it goes together it just looks it's like uh, you can do a lot with this it'll also line up vertically so control d go down and then uh, might as well for good measure go all the way and you can see uh, what you created. I had too many of these beads on this one, but that's that's the fun part. You can you can do anything, make anything you want 
let's just group this part and I'm going to lay it on top of this black gradient I put down here, just like we had in the thumbnail. Okay, and then we'll zoom in. I mean, look at that. It goes dark, right? I'm just, I'm just pulling the gradient. It looks like, it's like jellyfish. I feel like nature uses interpolate. And now you can too. So hopefully that uh, you can have some fun with that. Make some beautiful patterns. Design some text, textbooks, whatever you need to do. And I will see you later. Thanks.